can you unpack uh, for us kind of what the the Lutheran position of soteriology, maybe like the order of salutis, and kind of explain uh, how how Lutherans understand the process by which we come to God, uh, and then we'll kind of dive in after that. Yeah, to be honest, that's kind of a big question, and I would say we'd have to kind of start with particulars. Probably, um, it, it's kind of hard to give a like a very brief summary um, because there. I'll tell you why. I'm looking at the poster behind your head right now, and I see that John Calvin and Jacob Arminius fighting each other, right? So <laughs> the, the kind of Calvinist-Arminian debates have largely framed how we speak about salvation, within at least within the American church and a large portion of the evangelical church around the world. Uh, and I think because those categories of those two groups, which really both come out of the Reformed branch of the Reformation, um, at least in their roots, uh, that's kind of shaped a lot of our conversations. So when we say things that are, you know— Lutheran often has people just get confused because they're thinking in a very different paradigm. Um, so let me just, maybe he, here's a way to, to break down some of the basics. First of all, if we're talking about the doctrine of salvation in a broad sense, or soteriology, um, I would say we have to speak about our salvation in a, basically a twofold sense. We have that which is objective and that which is subjective. Uh, and by objective, I mean uh, we can speak about the objective work of Christ, or what sometimes theologians call the historia salutis, right, the history of redemption. And from a Lutheran perspective, that which is done objectively in the life of Christ, particularly his life, death, and resurrection, that is accomplished universally and objectively for all mankind, all humankind, every single person, right? No one is excluded from that. Um, so, and that's what we call objective justification, is this idea that in Christ, he is justified, and as Christ is justified, the whole world is is justified in him. Uh, but then we have what is uh, the subjective aspect of that, the question of how then does the objective work of Christ that accomplished our salvation, how does that come to us individually? How does that come to us uh, personally? So uh, in, when we're talking about that, Lutherans speak a lot about the sacraments, right? So we have two things to talk about here. We have, on the one hand, the question of how does God bring that objective and universal work of Christ to individuals now in history, right? We're separated 2,000 years in history from where Christ was and what he did. So how does that work come to us? And the answer to that, we would say, through the means of grace. Uh, so we can speak about the word of God and the sacraments. And so that's, those are the, I've used the language that's kind of a delivery system that God has used to bring his grace uh, and redemption to us. Uh, and then we have the related question, which is, okay, that's how God gives it. Now, how do I receive it? If we're asking that question, the answer is sola fide, faith alone. So I receive it in faith, the means of grace, God brings me the gifts of grace and saves me. And we would also say, because there's a lot to this discussion, but we would also say with Calvinism uh, that faith itself is a divine gift. So faith is a gift of God. Um, in other words, we would confess that that objective work of Christ is universal. In that way, it's similar to where the Arminians are coming from. But in terms of where faith comes from, uh, we would say that it is the work of the Holy Spirit alone in giving us the gift of faith.